Right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shot there from the Chicago camp coming back to you with what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. And I just so happened to catch this on the interweb. And it's on a BBC News and it says Venezuela crisis, desperate women selling their hair. OK. Now, for most of you who all that don't know about this, because I'm not just going to assume that, you know, uh, what's going on in Venezuela, but they're in a very terrible position right now. OK, you have hyperinflation of their dollar at an all time high. OK, you actually have an American coup happening in Venezuela right now where this guy uh, Guaido or Guaido or whatever his name is. OK, he's backed by the elites to overthrow Maduro. OK, and you have huge famine and pestilence and disease. Some have gone to cannibalism. They, I've even read stories where. Their money is so worthless that they're using it to make purses and other types of designs. So Venezuela is in a very, very pitiful case right now. All right. Now it's gotten to the point where they're selling their hair. Hell, I even read another article not too long ago that was talking about uh, these women are selling breast milk. OK, Venezuela is in a very, very pitiful case right now it's it's really sad but you know with wisdom and understanding as far as it pertains to the scripture okay you know this is just judgment judgment from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because the people don't want to get right but without further ado let's get into this uh quick video it's about a minute and a half long so we'll watch this video and get a few scriptures and uh end it out cabello, compramos cabello, a mí compramos cabello, venga yo le doy el, el valor del cabello que podemos ser, más bien, que puede vender su cabello para eso comprar cabello, ya tuvieron que llegar al grado más extremo que es cortarse su cabello para poder conseguir dinero. centímetros ya al menos se puede coger a los 15 a los 20 a los 30 centímetros ya se le puede comprar pues dejarte comprar los mañana te pueden dar 250 mil pesos pero depende del largo del cabello me deja ver el largo de tu cabello pero cuando te van a tocar nomás de la parte de atrás de acá de esta parte de acá realmente a la mujer venezolana le duele tanto perder su cabello como otra parte de su cuerpo cada mujer que pasa por acá sueña que va a regresar a su país. Cada hombre que llega sueña con volver a su familia. Eh, yo compramos cabello, mami, compramos cabello. Bien caro, compramos cabello. <laughs> hey, you see there? That, hey, that, that's, that's a poor and pitiful case that those people are in there, in, in Venezuela. Sorry about that. Okay. And so, hey, like brothers been saying, man, we... This scripture is going to come out a lot, but uh, it appropriately applies to the situation. Okay, Isaiah 32 and 9, it says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear to my speech. That means you women need to give attention to what's being said by the men of the Lord because as the scripture says the Lord doeth nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants the prophets so we are the Lord's voice okay and we're telling you women to wake up and be attentive to the message that we're pushing forth all right letting you know that 
you you men and women down there in Venezuela, along with you other so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, that you all are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites by blood. All right. This is your heritage. This is your history. These law, statutes, and, and commandments in the Bible are for you. It says, Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. And as we all know, or some of us know, if you've been paying attention to Venezuela, you know that this, the, the, the situation that they're in right now, the condition, the plight, the suffering that they're enduring right now, if you've kept up with the situation in Venezuela, you know that this has been years in the making. This just didn't happen overnight. So when it says here that many days and years shall ye be troubled, these women have been troubled for years over there. Okay? It's, it's going from plenty of food to rationing food. And then, okay, we done ran out of food that we normally eat. Now let's eat animals that we don't eat. And then that became scarce. And then to grass and vegetables and plants. And now folks are killing each other over a pound of rice. All right. It, it, the, the, the vintage has failed for them. Okay. It says, tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip ye and make ye bear and gird sackcloth upon your loins, meaning that you have to humble yourself. Okay, verse 12 it says, They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Now, you saw in the video the man said, All these people in Venezuela they just want to go back home. All right, they just you can tell that when he meant when they when he's talking about going back home, you know go back to the way things used to be you know when they were able to eat comfortably and live comfortably and didn't have to worry about getting jacked and prostituting yourself okay those days for Venezuela are over they are completely over and these women are in, in a in, in deep distress Okay, it says, they shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. All right. They want things to go back to the way that they used to be. All right. But they can't. And they're pained and they're troubled. And you, you saw uh, what and you heard what the man said. Okay, he said, it, it, I forgot specifically, but uh, the, the Venezuelan women they're hurt when they have to sell their hair and naturally so because as the scripture says uh, uh, it's probably spelled with a U No, nah, I want to get it in this one because it's hard to pull that up. Ah, 1 Corinthians 11 and 15. Okay. It says, yes, 1 Corinthians 11 and 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Okay? So, that's why those Venezuelan women are hurt. Alright? That, that curse in Isaiah 3 didn't necessarily hit them like it did the southern kingdom. So, the northern kingdom, you women in the northern kingdom, you Latino tribes, so-called Latino tribes... You all still have that ability to grow that long flowing natural hair, right? Because even though you may not know it, deep in your spirit, your spirit knows that it is a beautiful and glorious thing to have long, thick, healthy, curly or straight hair. 
It is a beautiful thing. It is a crown of glory. All right. And, and as men, we know this too. Have you ever seen a woman that, you know, always had her hair up in a bun? Okay. Or she might work at a place where they have to wear hair nets or certain hats. And then one day she, it, I don't know, it could have been hot or whatever. And she finally took her hair out of that bun and her hair just flowed just dropped all the way down to her behind you was like whoa hey man that that's that glory all right that's that appeal that a woman is supposed to have especially when she has long natural flowing hair okay that's why those women are hurt And the thing is, you you so-called Latino tribes, hey, what's messed up about this is that through all of this pain and suffering, you all are still not calling on your how by Shem Yahweh Shai, okay? You're hoping that uh, Guaido helps you. You hoping that Maduro helps you. You hoping that uh, Edomite Jesus helps you. You hoping everybody helps you but your true power. That's why the scripture says. Uh, I think it's strength. Flesh. I forgot where it was, but it was talking about uh, about making who who trust in their flesh and make arm their strength. Uh, uh, roughly paraphrasing, I'm gonna try this one more time, and if I can't find it, then so be it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't find it, but it, it I, I hate that I had to have butchered it, but that that's the point, you know. But the, what that precept is talking about is how you all are looking to er, every single answer that's carnal and it's not helping you. You're relying on everything that you're not supposed to lie on. But your one true power, which is Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. And if you just so happen to be in Venezuela and hear this message, okay, you need to repent and get right. Because things are going to get even more worse than what you're going through right now. And as the scripture says, where there's no hedge, there's no protection. So if you don't get with a man of the Lord, all right, if you don't start calling on the name of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, all right, and getting back to this Bible, to their law, statutes, and commandments, okay, you're not going to be able to withstand the upcoming terrors that are going to befall you in the very near future. All right, so with that being said, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we want to say shalom.